It's good to have you with us at this hour. I'm Daniel Che, here with the latest news. President Bacone is now in Lima, Peru, the second stop on her South America tour. Over the next three days, she will seek ways to spur cooperation with Peru that go beyond trade and investment. Our Che Yusan sends us this report all the way from Lima. Amid much fanfare over her visit, President Bakunhe is scheduled to have a summit meeting with Peruvian President Oyanda Umala on Monday. Even before her arrival, local media reported on President Buck's visit and the future of Seoul Lima relations. In an interview with Peruvian Daily Gestion, President Buck said she recognized how far the two sides have come since implementing their FTA in 2011. She said it's now time for Seoul and Lima to talk about cooperating on infrastructure, health care, and defense. In fact, there is speculation about whether her latest visit will pave the way for Korea to export its combat aircraft, including the FA-50, to Peru. Korea Aerospace Industries is currently trying to sell the FA-50 to Peru. During the president's visit, a ceremony will be held to mark the first local production of a Korean trainer jet, the KT-1P. Earlier, President Buck spent her final day in Colombia, offering her thanks to Colombian veterans who fought in the Korean War. Colombia was the only South American country to send troops, and nearly 700 Colombians were either killed or injured in the battle. Siempre nuestra amistad existirá, crecerá, y la recordarán los hijos de los hijos de nuestras dos naciones. She spoke one-on-one -on -one with a veteran whom she had met 40 years ago during her father's presidency and with another veteran who had sent a letter saying he wants to visit Korea. President Bak also met with Koreans who live in Colombia, praising their support for the veterans and their families. She added that as the two countries boost cooperation, there will be more opportunities for them in Colombian society. Choi yoo Arirang News, Lima. Shifting our focus back to Korea, Prime Minister Lee Wan Gu made a public appearance on Sunday, his first since allegations of his involvement in a graft scandal prompted the main opposition party to demand his resignation. The Prime Minister attended a ceremony on Sunday to commemorate the 55th anniversary of the April 19th revolution. There he called for the creation of an atmosphere for achieving a peaceful reunification of the Korean peninsula and upgrading the country's image by strengthening democracy. The event was one of many festivities around the nation on Sunday, honoring the student democracy activists who led the uprising in 1960 that resulted in President Lee seung mans resignation. Prime Minister Lee wan gu is accused of taking bribes from a businessman who claims to have given money to eight heavyweight politicians before committing suicide earlier this month. Staying with politics, the ruling party says the government, the presidential office of Cheong Wade and the party itself are facing a crisis and call on all three to stick to their principles. Tenry floor leader Yu Seung Min said Sunday that the Korean people's trust in the governing party, the government and the presidential office is dissipating. He pointed out that all three must strive to be honest and sincere in everything they do. Yu said he would do his best to cooperate with the opposition party in passing a series of pending livelihood bills before the end of this month's parliamentary session. The South Korean companies at the Kaesong Industrial Complex are in a tough position as the standoff between the two Koreas over workers' wages continues. North Korea refuses to accept any wages without a pay hike, while the South doesn't want the companies to yield to Pyongyang's demands. For more, we turn to our Jim young gil South Korea's Kaesong business owners are stuck in a dilemma. On the one hand, they're facing the prospect of having to pay a late fee if they don't comply with the North demand for a wage hike. But on the other hand, they face the possibility of punitive measures from the South if they do. None of the 124 South Korean companies have paid the March wages yet, which are due April 20th. North Korea has threatened to impose a late fee of 15 percent per month if the South Korean companies don't issue the wage payments on time. 
South Korea says it will not accept the North unilateral demand for a wage hike, saying Pyongyang violated a 2004 agreement that calls for two quasi-governmental committees to set the pay rate together. The two committees met for a second time on Saturday, but failed to reach a compromise. In addition, Seoul has warned the South Korean companies operating in the complex that they will face punitive measures if they concede to the North wage hike demands. The two Koreas have been at odds over the issue since February, when the North unilaterally decided to raise the wage level by more than 5 percent to roughly 74 U.S. dollars a month starting in March for the approximately 53-thousand North Korean workers in the complex. Seoul's unification ministry says it is still sending messages to Pyongyang, asking to meet on the wage issue. But the North maintains that it's a matter for Pyongyang to decide. Kim young Arirang News. Moving over to the U.S., economic growth in developed countries has strengthened, but some emerging nations are being hit by weaker commodity prices and exports. That was the warning issued by the International Monetary Fund during its annual spring meetings in Washington over the weekend. According to IMF member nations, policymakers should take further measures to lift actual and potential growth as the global economic recovery remains moderate and uneven. They also said with the U.S. poised to hike interest rates, it is essential that moves toward policy normalization are accompanied by an effective communication of changes to reduce the risks of spillovers. There were few signs of a renewed flare-up in the currency wars, but China's growing economic clout with its new development bank, the AIIB, overshadowed the talks. The Korean government is pushing to launch a wage peak system as part of efforts to help young people find jobs. Finance Minister Che Kyung-hwan described it as a job-sharing program designed to boost youth employment while providing older employees with job security. Under the system, the wages of older employees would be reduced when they reach a certain age. The money saved would then be used to hire more young people. According to the minister, roughly 500,000 young people enter the job market every year, but less than half are hired as regular position workers. Che also vowed to help companies cover potential losses associated with implementing this new system. Korea's slowing exports are raising alarm bells for the export-reliant Korean economy, prompting the government to step in and get exports back on track, particularly to China, Korea's number one export destination. Our Kim ji yeon reports. Korean exports slipped for a fourth straight year last year. The Korea International Trade Association says the country's exports increased a mere 4.4% in 2014, a stark contrast to the figure recorded in 2010 when exports increased 22% from the previous year. In particular, exports of petrochemical and oil products, LCD panels and telecommunications equipment fell in 2014. The agency says the fall is mainly due to the slow global economic recovery, the drop in oil prices and increased competition from China. Since Korea is highly dependent on exports for growth, the downward momentum has raised alarm bells for the local economy. In response, the trade ministry unveiled measures earlier this week to help boost exports, particularly to China, which currently takes up a quarter of Korea's export volume. Under the plan, the ministry says it will support local firms seeking to expand into China's e-commerce market. It's also planning to provide consultation for exporters of consumer goods, such as cosmetics, health and beauty products, and dietary supplements, to help them increase their footing in the Chinese market. However, it remains to be seen whether the measures will be effective. During the January to March period, exports dropped nearly 3 percent from the same period last year to 133.6 billion U.S. dollars. Kim Jung, Arirang News. We move on to a different story now. One visible impact of Korea's free trade deals with Chile is the spike in grape imports. Data compiled by the Korea Customs Service shows Korea imported more than 47,000 tons or $152 million worth of grapes from Chile last year, or more than 80 percent of all grapes imports in 2014. Korea imported a total of 59,000 tons of grapes last year, or $189 million worth. That's a new record in grape imports and a sharp increase from the 28,000 tons in 2009 and 9,900 tons in 2004. 
Korea's grape imports from Chile have spiked since 2004 after the FTA between the two countries went into effect. Tariffs on Chilean grapes were removed entirely in January 2014. The gap between the haves and the have-nots is widening among Korean companies. Yonhap News reports that the net profit of the country's top 30 firms, mainly big conglomerates, accounted for 80 percent of the combined net profits earned by Korean businesses last year. In particular, Samsung and Hyundai Motor Group accounted for more than four-fifths of the top 30 companies' combined net profit of 38.4 billion U.S. dollars. That's a huge jump from the 48 percent recorded by the top two conglomerates back in the year 2010. Moving over to the world of sports, golfer Kim Se-young has clinched her second career LPGA Tour victory, boosting her chance of earning Rookie of the Year honors this year. Powered by a pair of stunning shots in the final stretch and closing with a 1 over 73, the rookie sensation raised a cup at the Lotte Championship in Hawaii on Saturday, becoming the first Korean LPGA golfer to win two tours this year. En route to the crown, Kim defeated a field crowded with her fellow Koreans, including the world number three, Park in Bi. Kim in kyung blinked first with a bogey on the 17th hole. The rising star took home the $270,000 purse, moving to the top of the money list with $699,000. So far this year, five South Koreans have combined for six victories in nine LPGA tournaments. And now the weather. Be sure to put on your raincoat or pack an umbrella if you're in Korea. The rain is expected to continue nationwide until early Monday morning. Drivers, be careful not just because of slippery roads, but foggy conditions as well. It could hinder your visibility. You'll also want to dress warm since it will be a chilly 11 degrees Celsius in the capital. And now let's check out the weather conditions outside of Korea around the world. And that's all we could pack into this newscast. Thank you so much for being with us. Do have a great start to your week.